There are a lot of dangerous challenges in the world, from savage animals and deadly weapons. But today we explore protection from something more nefarious, toxic chemical gases. By putting to test a method of making a gas mask using basic Stone Age technology, by taking inspiration from the Dr. Stone anime, teaming up with some extra help, and putting to test if you could build a mask from scratch that was effective against a chemical weapon or toxic gas. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. The Dr. Stone anime has a lot of similarities with the goals of this channel, with us both attempting in different ways to rebuild civilization from scratch. At the beginning of the year, we explored another invention from the anime attempting to recreate a refreshing carbonated glass of cola. I hate the Dr. Stone. I don't hate it, I just don't like it. It's better than nothing. <sighs> Part of the build involved a tubing made from leather that provided to be surprisingly effective at being airtight. Maybe it actually worked. Oh, my head is. <laughs> it made me curious about how effective another invention in the series would be. In the anime, they are in a quest to produce a medicine to heal one of the characters. To produce this medicine, they need sulfuric acid as an initial ingredient. Fortunately, they locate an active volcanic area with a lake of this acid, but around it is a poisonous gas of hydrogen sulfide. To overcome this, they construct a gas mask made of leather and bamboo that uses active charcoal as a filter to remove the toxic chemicals from the air. <laughs> If this piques your interest and makes you want to check out the Dr. Stone anime and its latest season that just came out, you should check out today's sponsor of Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is the largest destination for all things anime and manga. They are the easiest way to check out all the episodes of Dr. Stone so you can watch it from the beginning up to the latest episodes. Crunchyroll offers more than 90% of all officially licensed anime content in the world and is still growing. Crunchyroll now offers different tiers for those who sign up. With Crunchyroll Premium, you get all episodes ad-free at 1080p, the newest episodes as soon as one hour after they air in Japan via simulcast, and all episodes professionally subtitled. Go to crunchyroll.com slash htme or click the link in the description to get your 14-day free trial to Crunchyroll Premium now. That's crunchyroll.com slash htme. Tell me in the comments below what shows I should be checking out next on Crunchyroll. Making such an advanced and airtight device from such primitive resources seemed pretty fanciful. But so far in our series, we have actually unlocked a majority of the materials. So let's make an attempt to see if we can actually make a working gas mask able to filter out a harmful gas. Early in considering attempting this project, I got connected with another YouTuber also interested in this topic. So we decided to team up and tackle this challenge together. What's up everyone, my name's Lewis, and I make YouTube videos where we ask and answer questions that nobody's asking. Most famously, I'm known for testing how many slaps it takes to cook a chicken, but of course I've also tested other things like would Minecraft's boat work in real life, and can you climb a rope made out of licorice rope? Be sure to check out his channel. In previous videos, we've been able to source and unlock resources such as leather, bamboo, string, cloth, lemons, lye, olive oil, beeswax, and pine pitch. A crucial tool of so-called caveman glue will be very important for its water and airtight sealing ability, being made of beeswax, pine pitch, and charcoal powder. In addition to these materials, we also have several tools we've been able to produce, but we'll also be needing some additional tools to be forged. First up, an iron knife we can use to cut the leather. First, to make the leather mask to cover the mouth. Okay. So we're gonna make the gas mask, the part that actually will hold the tubing onto the face. We're gonna use leather. I've drawn a little pattern on here. We're gonna cut it out with this knife. See what happens. <laughs> I couldn't. Ooh. All right. Done. <laughs> it's like a Hannibal. <laughs> Oh my 
There we go. This where it goes in here. We'll sew it all together. Looks. Hell yeah. Meanwhile, I worked on another tool, a more efficient pole saw for sawing all the bamboo we need for the mask. All right, so we should now have all the materials for assembling the mask. We have the leather strap of the actual face mask that Lauren cut out. And then we have some bamboo here that I cut to length to try and make the valves on it. We have these two for the exhaling valve, and then these two for the inhaling. And hopefully we can create some one-way valves, which will then hook up to the tube we previously made in the cola episode and connect it to the big bamboo full of activated charcoal should hopefully filter and allow us to not die. Because basically what they do is just have the bamboo and they have some sort of cloth or leather over it. When you suck in, it'll kind of close up the hole. And then when you exhale, it'll balloon out and then you just put some holes along the edges. It's a really simple one-way valve. Then to seal all the gaps with a caveman glue. Previously in our cola episode, we made a tube of leather and sealed it with beeswax and olive oil sealant that we can now repurpose to connect our tubing to the mask. Bamboo is sharp. Oh. <laughs> Lastly, you just need a large piece of bamboo to hold the activated charcoal. Next up for the filtering device, the activated charcoal, with a little help from Lewis. Perfect. I feel like we should get some baking soda and vinegar. All right, so we got our wood chips and wood covered in a mound. Now we're just gonna light them up and uh, we'll come back later and hopefully have some charcoal. Let's do it. Did you bring in any of your uh, phosphorus? I wish. We can start painting buckets. the wood burn into charcoal, Lewis worked on the next ingredient needed using wood ash. Okay, so we're gonna be making pot ash here. Uh, and so we're gonna be taking this ash, then we're gonna send it through this sieve into the water, sift out the larger chunks, things that aren't really ash, 
uh, you know, like sticks and things. And the idea is that the water is gonna absorb the potassium carbonate that's in this ash uh, and then once we boil away the water, we should have just that potassium carbonate left over. The other thing is in the show, it's actually not 100% boiled away. Um, and I think that's okay because what we want it to do is get absorbed into the charcoal. Whoa. that sift for a minute. All right, so it's now been like three or four days. The uh, mound has finally stopped smoking, so hopefully we now have some completed charcoal. Let's open it up and check it out. Let's see what we got inside. Some of it fully char. A decent amount of charcoal here. All right, some of this isn't great, but definitely got some good stuff here. So next up, we gotta smash it into a fine powder and start activating it for a filter. <laughs> we're getting the charcoal finer and finer, and we're getting it to around maybe pebble size, small size right about now. But the truth is, as small as this already is, it's not as small as we want it to be because we want to maximize the amount of surface area of the charcoal that is going to be exposed to the gas flowing through it. The more surface area you have exposed, the more pores on the actual charcoal itself are exposed to that gas and so the more it can absorb. You could theoretically activate charcoal at this size, it's just not going to be super effective. But of course it's a double-edged sword because if you get it way too fine, uh, then it can clog the filter entirely and then you're not getting air. So you want to try to find a good happy medium. But we can actually make this even more effective by activating it. And to activate it, you can just combine it with an acid or a base and that should open up those pores even more and increase the surface area further than we already have just by crushing it. And then we have three different options to react with it. We have lemons we've collected before, we have the potash we made from the wood ash, and then we have lye we previously produced in our soap episode. Three different options, see what works best. Exciting. <laughs> it is kind of crackling a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, listen. Yeah. Yeah. Like Rice Krispies. It really doesn't want to mix. Just a sludge. <laughs> There's some charcoal mask over at us. Now to put it to the test. First, on a volunteer. Pass the thumbnail, as you. <laughs> so thanks to Adri, we have the little testing rig we put together. Should hopefully allow us to safely test it with chlorine gas. Tested it with a stink bomb, that it should be hermetically sealed. So we have a little mannequin head with a pipe drilled through its head. And it's got a little pump and that'll draw air in and out, running it through the mask. And then we have a little container where we'll mix bleach and muriatic acid to produce the chlorine gas. That's heavier than air, so we have a little fan to kind of distribute it all around so it doesn't just linger. So that should get sucked in through the activated charcoal. So we have the mask all put together, ready to load it with our activated charcoal. We'll have a pH strip inside to see if it reacts or not. And we'll have a pH strip on the outside. Chlorine gas is acidic, so it should change color for that. So we can get a rough gauge of how much is actually making it through and see if it'll actually save your life. So I think that the big test is the activated charcoal, then also the sealing ability with primitive technology. So we have leather, it's been coated with a little bit of a sealant. Then we have the caveman glue, which is watertight. So in theory, this should be airtight. Some question about the edge, maybe put a little bit of duct tape. Mannequin's a little bit harder than human flesh, so I think it's a little bit harder to get a, a seal. I agree. Can you actually make something airtight? With right, technology? exactly. Up. Air's coming out. Yep. Got a bleach. Muriatic acid. 
Oh yeah, there's gas. <laughs> see that guy up. I can see a thin layer of gas in there. Something is definitely happening. <laughs> pH strip is starting to change. Oh, I mean that's kind of a lot considering it's a gas. It definitely smelled some chlorine. Yeah. The smell of pool chlorine. But yeah, that's what it should smell like. Could be just the smell of bleach though. I think that guy's definitely dead. <laughs> he's gotta be super dead. No, he's gotta be a hero. At what parts per million is it dangerous? That was one thing I looked into when I was considering doing it with hydrogen sulfide gas. Will I be able to know that I'm dying before I'm dying? The test strip. That looks pretty pink. Oh yeah, that's like somewhere between a three or a two. I would say even closer to a two, yeah. Yeah, assuming there's some bleaching, maybe. It definitely reacted. It did? They're equally pink. I think just certain areas got exposed. Should we do a second attempt? All right. Put the bleach and go a little heavier this time. Running. All right. The strips are starting to turn pink already, I think. So I think it's definitely acidifying. Like we're gonna have to cleanse that mask pretty thoroughly. I would be pretty, pretty generous on the uh, Pentahydrate there. There you go. Awesome. Oh, there you go. Now that's some gas. Did you see that? How's it look? Hmm. Mixed. Mixed? Yeah. That's promising. The one inside the mouthpiece, very pink. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. That feels like death. Yeah. The edge ones. Not so bad, so we don't have leaks. Somewhere in the breathing apparatus, we're getting chlorine. We can feel pretty confident that the rig is working and that this is just not a reliable way to filter really just toxic gas in general. Because activated charcoal, we do know that it neutralizes chlorine gas. We just can't get it airtight. Even with all the duct tape, it's still leaking through. There's most likely just a, a leak in the tube itself. Honestly, that's probably it, yeah. It's probably better than nothing. Maybe for like five minutes, you'll not die. In the show, they'd be super dead. All right, so we got this guy all rinsed out and neutralized to get rid of all the toxic gas that apparently did make it through. So now we're ready to put it to the stink test and we're going to uh, actually try it on ourselves, load it up with the char activated charcoal again, release a few uh, stink bombs, and see how much we can smell. See how well we can breathe through it, where the litmus test might not have really told us if it was just a little or a lot that got through. But hopefully this will give us a little, a little clearer answer. Yeah, I think this should be a better sort of qualitative measure of how bad or how much of this gas is getting through. And I think it's also a really good test to run just because of the fact that this is how a lot of actual gas masks are tested for seal and for efficacy. Um, that way you know you don't have gaps around the side of your mask and you can also be pretty confident that it's filtering out whatever's coming in. Ugh. Nice. There, that should help. A little tight. <sighs> the tube was too long in the container and now it's too short in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to load me up? <laughs> All right. My toe's a little bit weak back. Oh, it's hard to breathe. <laughs> it is? Yeah. Can you smell anything through it? Uh, not really. Oh, that smells terrible. You can't smell anything? No, just like leather. I'll bring this around sort of toward the import. That's pretty impressive. Nothing. Wow. All right. I mean, considering how much I can smell it, like. Oh yeah, no, I smell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good, because that means that's working pretty well. Yeah. That's crazy. Whew. That's really impressive then. Senku sort of says in the show, he's like, oh, hey, you know, we have a limited amount of time with these things. He's like, yeah, I know these masks aren't perfect, but like, we're gonna be able to get away with being up here for 15 minutes or so because we need to make this medicine. It really smells. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It's really bad. Nothing. You're right, all you can smell is uh, leather, really. Yeah. That's gotta be doing more than nothing. Undecided if it'll save your life, but it's better than nothing. I yeah, say. absolutely. I wouldn't trust my life to it, but if it, you were in a life or death scenario and your option was this or nothing, it's, it's worth spending the time to make it, I think. I was ready for this to be completely like just fabricated. Like, yeah. yeah, this is one of those ones that only works on paper and not at all in real life. So it's it's cool to see that there's at least a solid amount of truth to it. 
Thanks again to Lewis for joining me in attempting this project, and thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon that make these projects possible in the first place. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.